Nate Diaz and Conor McGregor. By all ordinary accounts, both of these men are highly successful in their chosen field. But why is that? What makes someone become capable of fighting at this level for a UFC title, millions of dollars, and the amazing joy of completing your lifelong goals? Well, a quick look at the tail of the tape wouldn't tell you much about these fighters. It would tell you that both men are around 170 pounds, McGregor's 5'9", Diaz is 6 foot. Um, it'll give you some interesting information on their respective fighting styles and so on and so forth. But this doesn't tell you that much because I can tell you right now that I know 40 or 50 guys that could fit this exact same description and they're not on this fight card come August 20th. So why is that? What is it that makes these men different? Well, obviously it's something more than just simple statistics. No, to truly understand what makes these two men capable of doing what they do day in and day out, we have to move past records, we have to move past fighting styles, and we have to move past simple statistics. These men have built within themselves both mental and physical attributes that have empowered them to rise above challenges and shortcomings anybody must face on the road to one's desires. During the lead up to the first fight, McGregor tried repeatedly to get in the head of Diaz with taunting and trash talking. Diaz however remained unfazed. The normal psychological reaction of most of McGregor's opponents was to induce stress, self-doubt, and agitation. And these effects can cripple a fighter's performance before the match even begins. But Diaz was completely immune to these tauntings because he has developed an amazing mental fortitude. Now mental fortitude is the ability to shut out what is not important to you, what you don't need to hear, what you don't want to hear, and that allows you to focus on what's important. And in this case, that was the fight. Now, he also possesses an amazing amount of willpower. This power allows him to really push through. When he's going through situations that most men would crumble in, Diaz is just getting warmed up. And that is completely attributable to his willpower, his ability to continue on simply by the force of his will. Now McGregor has built a very different kind of mind from Diaz. It's his own personal style, his own personal solution to the challenges he's faced on his path. He has made his mind versatile, adaptable, a true mental chameleon, trying on many different techniques and many different fighting modalities. This is especially true with his stand-up fighting game. Because his stand-up style is unique, unusual, adaptable, and surprisingly effective. Although he's yet to truly adapt a strong ground game, and I do believe that's coming, his stand-up game has been unmatched in his matches thus far. And while this mental adaptability is a very powerful mental tool that he uses in every single fight and in every training session, it pales in comparison to his faith in himself. McGregor routinely uses visualization techniques to see himself achieving victory. The repetition of this has been proven time and again to develop positive mental belief systems within the visualizer, in this case McGregor. And these positive beliefs reduce stress, increase motivation, and help to create a clear, goal-focused mind. McGregor's faith in himself is likely his most powerful tool in his entire arsenal. Although this does make self-doubt, if successfully introduced, probably his greatest weakness. Now back to Diaz, let's take a look at Diaz's physical abilities, the ones he's trained into his body to help him get to where he is. First off, I'm going to say his durability. Much like the fortitude of his mind, Diaz has built a strong foundation of durability into his body. He has proven that his body, even after it's taken a significant beating, is still a capable and powerful and effective weapon against his opponent. In fact, he beat McGregor after taking nearly an entire round of shots that would floor most men. Although it's not just his durability that allowed him to do this, but also his stamina. Diaz trains for triathlons for fun. Yes, for fun. And that requires a lot of willpower, and it develops an incredible amount of stamina. Without that stamina, there's no way he would have been able to pull off that comeback victory against McGregor. He would have been far too gassed. The early success of McGregor in the fight was largely due to his incredibly balanced understanding of his own body and its capabilities. McGregor has explored functional and expressive systems of movement, and because of this, his body can adapt. He can try new and innovative movements and angles on a whim in the middle of the fight and trust 
that his body will find a way to make it successful. And this is the same reason for his next attribute, power. McGregor understands the subtle variations in body positioning, timing, and movement to take full advantage of his body's ability to produce power, so that in this way a smaller fighter can oftentimes hit with far more impact than a larger fighter who doesn't have this subtle finesse. McGregor has this understanding and he exploits it to generate incredible knockout power. In fact, at any point in any fight, you can always say McGregor at least has a solid puncher's chance to win. This subtle balance need for understanding makes McGregor stand out as a classic example of the king archetype. For like McGregor, a good king must understand the subtleties of his domain. And like a king, McGregor has a charismatic spirit and loves the spotlight. Diaz, however, is more of a raw fighter, with a will to survive and a complete lack of fear for any confrontation. Like a bull or a ram, he will charge at anything in his way. When you watch him, you can almost feel the heat and intensity coming off of him. Because of this, there's no better way to sum up Nate Diaz than a ram totem. Like a ram, he will butt heads with you, he will go for what he wants, nothing stands in his way, he's not going to stop. That completes our look at the internal world these men have built for themselves. Two separate approaches, but both done with enough focus, enough conviction, to develop the ability to become a UFC champion. But there's one more variable to look at, the wild card. This variable can push a man to greatness or make him crumble before its pressure. This is the world outside the fighters. For McGregor, the wild card is no doubt the people of Ireland. He is a huge lover of his heritage and his people and the opinions and desires of his fellow countrymen can very easily affect his confidence in himself and affect the outcome of the fight. For Diaz, the UFC is a family business, and his wild card is no doubt his brother Nick. Having family this close to you, even during training, can greatly affect the quality of your training and the quality of your mind come fight day. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, be sure to catch the fight, August 20th, 2016, Diaz vs. McGregor, number two. Thumbs up if you like the video, thumbs down if you don't. Feel free to leave comments, and make sure to subscribe.